Issue 40, Corporal Punishment. We should speak out against corporal punishment in our schools. Paddling kids with a board is itself child abuse, and it also promotes child abuse in our community by sending the message that it is okay for adults to hit children. Paddling creates fear in children and lowers their self-esteem. This adds to the dropout rate and lowers test scores, since students naturally lose interest in being educated in a Nazi-like atmosphere. It also humiliates and angers children, thus increasing the vandalism and violence among youth. Schools that forbid paddling are more peaceful, and the students appreciate being treated with respect. They respond in kind by respecting their teachers and the school. Comprehension One, how does the writer think corporal punishment affects society? Two, how does paddling affect a child's psyche? Three, how does paddling affect children's school life? Four, what is the relationship between paddling and vandalism? Let's talk. 1. Are you for or against paddling in school? Why? 2. What would you do if your child were paddled in school? 3. We often hear teachers say that they paddle their students entirely for the sake of the children's education. Do you really believe that? Or does paddling simply reflect the teacher's uncontrolled anger? 4. Do you spank your child at home? If so, when? If not, why not? Conversely, have your parents ever paddled you? 5. What are the side effects of corporal punishment? 6. Why do some teachers resort to paddling? 7. We hear teachers say that they have to paddle students in certain situations. Do you agree? Why or why not? 8. Who do you think is more responsible for a child's education, parents or teachers? Opinion Samples One. We realize that in this age of one-parent households, latchkey children, and increasing violence, we may feel we are losing control of the younger generation. That's partly because corporal punishment seems to have gone out of style, though in fact the principle never goes out of fashion. Children should be taught that violence causes more violence, and in that sense, some degree of corporal punishment is necessary. Question. What are the reasons today's children are becoming more violent? 2. Children learn through example, and the message a child receives when he is struck, slapped, or paddled is that might makes right. So, all good lessons must come from the head and the heart, not the fist or the paddle. Furthermore, teachers and principals should not be expected to do the parent's work. The job of the parent is to prepare a child for life to make sure he gets a useful education, to teach him to respect his elders, and to guide him in his ability to work cooperatively with others. Question. What are the different roles parents and teachers have in child education? Issue 40. Corporal Punishment. Excuse me, today I have to leave earlier than usual. Why? What's wrong? I have an appointment with the principal of my son's school. Oh, what happened? Two days ago, he was paddled at school. I don't think this is right. Was he unjustly punished? Oh, no. I'm convinced that he was responsible for a major breach of discipline. He was involved in a fight at school. So he did it. Then what's the beef? The school must maintain discipline. I'm convinced of that. Maybe even it should do a better job of that than it's currently doing. But I should have been informed of my son's actions, and I should be the one to determine how to react. Too many parents these days refuse to do anything about their children's behavior. 
and then they complain both about the school's attempts to take action and also about the way the younger generation behaves. Yes, I'm sure you're right. Everything is complicated in our society. Schools are in a no-win situation. Damned if they do, damned if they don't. But I'm a responsible parent, and I refuse to let the school act so arbitrarily. When I was a boy, if I got a spanking at school, I'd get another one at home. That did not reduce the amount of violent juvenile delinquency, however, or do anything to make our world a safer, more peaceful place. Kids need to learn that violence in and of itself is the wrong solution to any problem. Not that it is okay for the strong to use violence to enforce its own authority. So young people should be allowed to do whatever they wish, no matter what? No, of course not. They're not fully mature. They're not yet entirely ready to take responsibility for their own choices. Adults are both legally and morally responsible for the actions of their dependents. Then I don't understand what your point is. The school found your son engaged in a wrongful action and disciplined him for it. So did I. I told him why his activity was unacceptable and I placed a number of restrictions on him. I tried to get him to understand why what he did was wrong and I showed him there are consequences for bad behavior. I think he's much less likely to do the same thing again. But that doesn't excuse the school for taking equally wrong actions. How was the school in the wrong? The principal should have contacted me immediately and discussed the situation with me. Together, we should have reached an agreement on the most effective approach to resolving the situation. So, you might have approved of corporal punishment if you had been consulted about it. No, I didn't say that. Some parents don't object at all, and in some circumstances, I suppose corporal punishment may be an effective measure, as long as it is conducted fairly and dispassionately. But I personally oppose the whole idea. It's completely wrong-headed, as far as I'm concerned, to say, no one can do this on one hand, and then consciously go ahead and do that very same thing. The only lesson from this kind of behavior is that hypocrisy is fine for the ones in power. They can do whatever they like. Do as I say, not as I do. That's the wrong message. The real lesson should be, practice what you preach. I don't disagree with your philosophy, but I don't think it's very workable. Schools are highly bureaucratic, standardized institutions. The children come from an enormous number of varied backgrounds representing many different kinds of incomes and norms. A school must have the same policy for all and enforce it the same way in every instance. Otherwise, only chaos would ensue. I realize the constraints and problems schools operate under, but the only way to change anything is to protest against bad rules and suggest better alternatives. That's what I'm going to do this afternoon. Do you really think one afternoon is going to make any difference? Probably not, but I'm ready to spend a lot of time on this matter. The people in charge have a lot of issues to deal with and have to try and juggle their schedules to meet all these various needs. But I'm single-minded and don't have any other pressing concerns on my hands. Sooner or later, I expect the school authorities to cave in and come around to my way of thinking. I'm sure they will be forced to change their policies accordingly and adopt a more reasonable approach. Questions 1. Is there any question of the boy's guilt? 2. Summarize the man's attitude. 3. How can the woman's beliefs be applied to situations outside this specific case?